The humble menu screen is an often overlooked naturally occurring phenomenon commonly found in videoed games, or video gamus in the original Latin. The mark of a good menu screen is one that gives as much relevant information as quickly and conveniently as possible, because every second spent looking at this is a second that could have been spent playing with dogs, or climbing trees, or murdering people with assault rifles. You want a menu to be quick, simple, and easy to understand, but also visually interesting enough to keep the player from falling asleep at the proverbial third-party wheel, especially in turn-based RPGs where pretty much the entire game is menus. But, not unlike my childhood traumas, menu screens come in a wide variety. There are as many different types of menus as there are genders. Six. Those genders are character menus, pause menus, quick menus, inventory menus, main menus, and uh, maybe I'll talk a little bit about David Cage, who knows? Hadouken! Character select menus are both the rarest and typically most difficult type of menu to get right. Because they only really appear in games that are either online, competitive, or Mario Party, it's hard to find a specific template that works for everyone. Like, showing all the playable characters falling down a pipe is a cute and thematically appropriate way of presenting your choices in Mario, but how do you apply that principle to, say, Mortal Kombat? Street Fighter has these nice 3D models showing which character you've picked, but only uses about a fifth of the screen for function, which means you don't need to trek across the country to find Chun-Li, but there's also an awful lot of white noise. Games like Super Smash Bros. do a good job of utilizing the whole screen, but it quickly becomes a where's wally of obscure Nintendo characters like Ice Climbers or Solid Snake. <laughs> oh, cool, you wanna play as Olimar? Cool, 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 see you in three days. How am I supposed to get into League of Legends if I need a PhD to understand the fucking roster? What I'm trying to say is that character menus are a mixed bag. Some of them good, some of them bad, none of them great. You kinda just have to play it by ear. It, it truly is the jazz of menus, I'm so fucking stupid. I'd also like you all to appreciate that I'm two and a half minutes into a video about menu screens and haven't mentioned Persona 5 even once. Persona 5's pause menu is a thing of beauty. It's got this nice, big, easy-to-read text and a striking color scheme, but the real star of the show is the transition animations, which flow beautifully into one another as you select different options, which really eases the pain of trying to figure out where the fuck anything is. With the location of the text changing frequently and everything being hidden under subcategories, it's easy to get lost, but having a nice crunchy UI really helps carry the load. But look, we all know this game is the king of funk, so in the interest of keeping this video from becoming a Persona 5 fanfiction, this is the last I'll mention it. As a sharp contrast from my previous example is almost every other game ever made, which will typically just show a few basic options and settings, and sometimes, if you're lucky, just the word pause. Most times they're quick, simple, and to the point. Other times they're Fable 3, which for some reason thought it was a good idea to make you wait for them to load a big room that just contained a lot of smaller rooms that would also have to load. Whenever you wanted to do anything. Function over form is generally a good rule of thumb, because that's all a pause menu needs to be. It's just there for when you need to take a quick break. Maybe go to the bathroom or grab something from the fridge. I, I put a mid-roll there as like a little joke, but uh, you and I both know you're using ad block. You little minx. Quick menus come in two different flavors for both turn-based and real-time combat. I spoke a little about the former in the Pokemon video, which if you haven't seen Fucking hell, how'd you manage to thread that needle? But you probably already know my thoughts. If the goal is to give the player all the options they could possibly want in as few clicks as possible to keep the pace of the battle chugging along, then games like Pokemon, Final Fantasy, or Chrono Trigger all do perfectly serviceable jobs. But they're also about as exciting as Missionary. Perhaps you like things a bit spicier. Maybe you're more of a pretzel kind of gal. More of a butter churner. A spork, dare I say. <laughs> if that's the case, then obviously Persona 5 is the way to go. It's stylish, it's quick, it's functional, and no, I will not stop talking about it. On the other side of quick menus are the real-time variations. So things like weapon wheels, hot bars, whatever Metal Gear Solid's got going on. Anything that gives you many options, many fast. A great example would be the backpack system in The Last of Us, which is easy to use and gives you plenty of options, but also adds a layer of strategy for preparing which weapons you want quick access to when the shit hits the fan. 
It also allows for tense moments in a firefight as you desperately scramble for a loaded gun. A not so great example would be Breath of the Wild's quick menu, which isn't the worst thing in the world, but for a menu you need to use way too often, it really doesn't add much. Maybe it would be an idea to have Link automatically equip whatever's next in the slot by holding down the attack button after your weapon breaks. I don't know, I'm not Shigeru Miyamoto. In a perfect world, all games would be like Devil May Cry 5, where you don't need a quick menu and can just change weapons and combat styles with the push of a button. But that's not always an option. No matter how savvy your quick menu is, sometimes you just need a little more information, leading me nicely into our next category. While inventory menus are rarely the star of the show, they're definitely among the most important. Because of how often the player will likely be interacting with it, it's imperative for this type of menu to be easy to use and understand. And while things are much easier to use on PC, where you can click and drag anything you like, the limited buttons on a controller means developers had to get creative. A great example would be Metal Gear Solid 3's Survival Viewer, which is a one-stop shop for everything you could possibly need, from snacks to surgery. It also makes these satisfying bleeps and bloops as you navigate, and has a couple of fun easter eggs, like spinning Snake around until he vomits, or viewing Eva's medical history. A slightly less elegant example would be the notoriously busy Zelda inventories. As you all probably know, Ocarina of Time's Water Temple is to video games what waterboarding is to torture, in that it's frequently inflicted on innocent people who, ironically, would rather just be actually drowning. And the reason for that is how often you have to watch this tedious menu animation to equip and unequip the goddamn iron boots. In the 3DS version, your menu is on the bottom screen, so you can just tap whatever item you want and boom, you're done. And while it is possible to steer into a clunky menu and turn it into a positive, like with Resident Evil 4 Suitcase, which is like a little game of Tetris only with grenades, generally speaking, function is the way to go. Bonus points if you can give it a decent in-universe theme, like a Pokemon Trainer's Backpack, an Android's OS, or a Vault Dweller's Pip-Boy. Also, Persona 5 is a really nice inventory. The main menu is usually the first thing you'll see when booting up the game. And while for multiplayer games, that usually consists of different game types or options, more often than not, you'll just get the title of the game, maybe a little animation going on in the background, and uh, probably a catchy banger to get you all jacked off and ready to play. Because of how often we see them, Main menus have the tendency to get burned into our gamer brains without us even realizing, with the text and sound burying themselves so deep into our subconscious that Sigmund Freud would probably have a stroke. Like, I bet a lot of you will be able to tell me which game is which based on just the font alone. Or how about this? Close your eyes and tell me, which game does this sound come from? Or this one? Or what about this one? Resident Evil. Yeah, that last one is real tricky. The music logo background formula has proven to be pretty reliable, and it's still the go-to for most games today. But I'd like to give a special shout out to the games that go above and beyond. Persona 5 has this nice stylized reds on blacks shot of the main cast waiting around a train station, but it really comes to life as the camera characters and backgrounds move around and change dynamically as you select different options. I'm not sorry. Call of Duty Blops takes the function over form list approach and says, Fuck that. We're gonna make our main menu part of the game's lore. I'm talking diegetic menus, you bitch. I'm sorry for calling you a bitch just now. Not only is having the interrogation room serve as a menu an amazing idea, but secretly adding the ability to break out of the chair and access hidden extra menus, what the fuck? A much more subtle example would be the calm, but also somehow unnerving shot of this window from The Last of Us, with the cracked paint and overgrown vegetation hinting at something sinister. It also gets bonus points for planting Ellie's knife in the windowsill after you beat the game. It's quiet and understated, but it also definitely sticks out in your mind. But for me, the absolute goat of main menus is definitely, and no, I'm not joking, David Cage's Detroit Become Human, where your personal android Chloe becomes more and more sentient as the game progresses and talks to you about her thoughts and concerns. Maybe... Maybe we should leave things as they are. There's one point where she asks, We've been playing together for a while now. I was wondering, are we friends? And I was like, what? No. And she got upset, and I, I felt bad. No this is the only game I've ever played where I would quit to the main menu every now and then just to check in. You look tired today. I hope you're doing okay. At the end of the game, Chloe asks to be set free. And if you say yes, then she's gone. Thank you. Forever. Even if you start a new game. And you miss her. 
the main menu is the best part of Detroit, which does not bode well for the rest of the game. Speaking of which... The internet likes to take the piss out of David Cage, and yeah, his writing could be accurately described as bad and not good. But every time he comes out with a new game, it's a fucking event. Get your friends over, whip out the bingo cards, and get shit-faced drunk. You are guaranteed an amazing Friday night. Heavy Rain is ridiculous, but I will never forget fucking smacking my friend Jordan across the face as hard as I could because we had a slap bet going on whether or not I could figure out who the killer was. Beyond Two Souls is not good, but playing as Aiden throwing knives at these teenagers and setting their house on fire, as my friend who was playing as Ellen Page desperately tries to wrestle the controller from me, is one of my favourite gamer moments. Detroit Become Human is fucking drivel, but put a boy on my couch and a beer on my belly and hot damn we are gonna lose our minds when violent domestic terrorist Martin Luther King and straight edge best boy Connor Robocop engage in a battle for the future of robot kind because we had them play opposite sides as a joke. Nice try, but I'm no deviant. David Cage is a hack and I will buy every single one of his games at launch. That puts him up there with Naughty Dog, CD Projekt Red and my boy Kojimbo because with a few friends and even more whiskey, Quantic Dream are responsible for the most fun you can have with a video game. Well guys, that's about all I got. Thank you so much for watching to the very end. I'm sorry I didn't have time to talk about some great examples like the codec from Metal Gear Solid where you get to talk to your buddies and aggressively flirt with pretty Asian girls and or Otacon, or Brutal Legend's amazing interactive FMV main menu. Please don't yell at me in the comments. Or on Twitter out of House O'Regan. But do let me know some of your favorite menus from video games and uh, maybe even subscribe so you can join us next time when our topic will be the problem with multiple endings in video games. Oh, that actually is the next episode. Hmm. This has never happened before. Do you remember